Direct from the Broski Nation headquarters in Los Angeles, California, this is the Broski Report with your host, Brittany Broski. Good morning, Vietnam! Good morning. Get up, cocksuckers. It's all over. Put some patriotic music over this. I miss the Roma Roma. <laughs> Guys, get up. Get up, cocksuckers. It's all over. Welcome back to another episode of the Broski Report starring me, Brittany Broski, the host of the Broski Report. Guys, what a fucking week! What are we doing? Okay, guys, there is so much to discuss. But number one, get up, cocksuckers, it's all over. That's my new vocal tick of the week. I love it. I love that's it's not new, but it's so applicable. I just pounded, just butt chugged, butt enema two Cafe Bustellos. Guess what? I'm back to drinking Cafe Bustello. That shit is jet fuel. It is direct taurine into my veins like a warm-blooded American. Okay, so much to discuss, guys. I don't even know. I just kind of went blank for a second. Like, my mind just kind of uh, clocked out. First of all, I know you're sick of hearing about it, but I had the once-in-a-lifetime privilege and I don't even mean like interviewing, like sit down conversation with Andrew Hosier Byrne. And for any longtime fans of both me and this podcast, you know that that is an earth shattering, life changing event. And I'm trying not to freak the fuck out right now because I already kind of freaked the fuck out about it. And I don't think I've really processed the full range of emotions that have come from talking to him. Because this was, and this will come out uh, later this week, but I am such a fan, right? Like everyone knows that. When you're a fan of someone, you watch a lot of interviews that they're in. You watch how they behave in that sort of setting. And so I kind of did everything in my power to make this a non-routine interview. The nature of it was, it was at ACL. I was just at ACL this past weekend, which is Austin City Limits, which is my favorite music festival on the planet. And it all just kind of was serendipitous the way that it worked out where they were like, yes, you could do a 30 minute interview with him. And I was like, wait, for real? And they were like, yeah, 30 minutes. And I was like, 30 minutes. But I also knew 30 minutes would go by like that. And so I knew with that sort of time, which is substantial, like that's, that's kind of a long interview, especially at a music festival, you got stuff to do. I was like, I want to make this worth his time. And I want to show him that, that respect of, I know what you've been asked and I would like to avoid that. You know, let's take a new approach to this interview style. And so I tried to sprinkle in questions that both respected Hosier's lore, you know, that sort of thing, but also honored the new body of work and how his ideals and his perspective and his hyper fixations influence and inform his creative process. In a way that, you know, it's very Zane Lowe. I really, really love Zane Lowe's interviews. I think he's so talented and he's so good at what he does. And I, and I tried to channel that with also, you know, a bit of myself. When I'm interviewed, it's so rare that the interviewer has a personality. And on top of that, like, is funny. You know, like, they're good at getting the sound bites or whatever, I guess. But, like, when you can actually spar and banter back and forth with the person interviewing you, it just makes it an all-over, more enjoyable experience. And so I really wanted to give that to Hosier because I, he deserves it. And, and I want to break up the monotony of, you know, talking about this album. And I told him that. I was like, I'm sure you're very tired of talking about fucking Dante and Dante's Inferno and how it influenced the album. And so we had a really, really great discussion. And I'm in the... Guys, I can't move to Ireland. Like, I'm already... I know that, like, we're going to get together and it's going to be a whole thing. And, like, I just... I can't move to Ireland. My life is here. <laughs> My life is in LA. Like, I don't know if I could... But I could. I think that, you know, we could mutually agree upon meeting in the middle. We could both move to Texas. I think, you know... Or I would be willing to live in New York, maybe, if, if Andrew wants to move to New York. What are you talking about? <laughs> anyway, it was a beautiful, beautiful discussion. And he's just so, I just don't really have enough kind words to say, which is such a, I'm so, I, I picked the right people to stand sort of thing. You know, like with Harry, it's the same of like, you know that he's the best. 
with Hosier, like, you know that he's the nicest guy you've ever met in your life. So I knew that going in and it's so nice to just have that be validated and, and be confirmed. He was so engaging and such a a good listener. I was the interviewer and he was listening to me like a therapist. And he's so charming and so soft spoken and it was kind of this beautiful balance of an interview style where I am so loud and annoying <laughs> that his answers were so thoughtful and balanced and it made a really he's so witty too obviously he's so funny dude if you're a hosier fan you know he's got a great sense of humor like he's very funny and i wanted to highlight that and so i, I tried to pick questions that 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 highlighted that and uh he's so i had so much fun and it's such a privilege to be able to talk to these people in that way because his art and him as a person have changed my life in so many ways and i to this is like any fangirl's dream to be able to look that person in the eye and say, you have changed my life for the better. And thank you for making this, you know, whatever this body of work is just to be able to communicate that is, is all you could ever want. Like growing up as a direction or growing up as like a Harry fan, that's all you ever want is just to look at him and like give him a hug and be like, thank you. And just to communicate how much he's changed your life to be able to do that with Hosier was he's the best. So yeah, met Hosier, interviewed him before his set at ACL. Then they were like, he has to go, whatever. And it was kind of evident, like, he didn't want to leave. I <laughs> just so like, oh my God. I really think he had fun, which is, I'm so, so happy that I was able to do that for him. Like, that he had fun. And his team was like, okay, we need to go. And he was like, bye. He kept, like, waving bye at me. I was like, ah! <laughs> I'll move to Ireland. I will move. Fine. Okay. If we can find like a little, you know, three bed, if we can put the Broski Report thing in a, a, the set in a bedroom in Ireland, I'll do it. You know, whatever. I can deal with the time difference. I'll go keep the bees. Fine. Andrew, I'll keep the bees because <laughs> he keeps bees. It was so just magical. He leaves. His set is like two hours after that. And so we go in this little section for his set. And girl, I just, I need to talk about this really quick. We walked from this like VIP platinum something section at ACL down the middle of the crowd at like the main stage, the, the American Express stage at ACL, which is like the main one for headliners. I walk down the middle and these are people, you know, like in the, the pit who have been barricading for Niall Hosier and Mumford and Sons all day. Like that was the lineup. Bitch, get into it. They had been barricading all day. And I'm fortunate enough to where a lot of those fans overlap with Broski Nation. Like, thank God, because we're on the right side of history. And I walk down the middle of this, and bitch, I felt like fucking Princess Diana. The way people screamed for me? Mental illness. Y'all have a problem. It's so, I, I don't really have words to describe, like putting names or not names, but like putting faces to the people who watch y'all, like seeing y'all. I was walking down this thing, like just trying to go to my little viewing section. And the way people screamed, you would have thought that I was literally Lady Di. It was stupid. And it's so overwhelming in the best way of like, people were screaming louder for me than when Niall walked down that little section. Like, it's just, it's crazy. And so we walk back there shortly after, like Hosier's about to start his set. Niall is in our section! <laughs> and I didn't bother him. I didn't bother him. Here's his, look, look at this. That's Taylor. That's my bestie, Taylor and Niall. <laughs> same, same. I was right next to her. That was him. And you know, half of me was like, that's not Niall. He's not blonde. Idiot. And then there was this cute moment in ACL where there were so many Irish artists. I guess. And Hosier and Niall like went to this Irish pub and watched the rugby game together. I think they lost. Sorry. And it was just so like, these are real people. And uh, my little uh, peanut brain forgets that sometimes. Obviously, like these people have, <laughs> uh, that's stupid. Yeah. So stood next to Niall in the VIP <laughs> section. Like, what are we talking about? I go up to him and I'm like, I used to read fan fictions about you uh, kidnapping me. <laughs> Hey, Niall, big fan. Um, I used to read fan fictions on an app called Wattpad. You ever heard of it? Of you and the rest of the boys kidnapping me out of my biology class. So I uh, just wanted to 
let you know about that. Him being like, security, could we please? <laughs> security, do something. Hey, Niall, big fan. Um, I used to read fan fiction about my mom selling me to One Direction. <laughs> Being sold to One Direction is a crazy, crazy, famous, famous in the Directioner community. Okay, put it up here. A famous published piece of art. <laughs> anyway, so that just happened. But yeah, it was a beautiful, magical weekend. And I'm so, 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 I, I can't, I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. I'm so grateful for just this and that I get to do this as a job. It's overwhelming sometimes. I get very emotional. Because you guys really, really ride. <laughs> ride. The Broski Nation tanks. Okay? We're doing tanks. We're doing tactical gear. We're doing aerial raids. Broski Nation does not fuck around. Broski Nation was there at ACL. No, but we are truly... Broski Nation is a municipal state. We're in the UN. As of, I think we're going to go for like a November 1 initiation. We are in the UN, officially. <laughs> Welcome, guys. A Mr. Roba Roba. I feel like we're approaching to completely pivot. I feel like we're approaching the tail end. Guys, healing is possible. The tail end of the Call of Duty era. I am over it. Okay? I'm over it. And now I don't want to like beat a dead horse, but Badger. <laughs> Whatever, dude. If y'all don't know who Badger is, I've already explained it. It's kind of been a thing. On TikTok, people have clipped it because he apparently reacted to me talking about him. And yeah, his voice is hot. And yeah, I want him. Okay? Yeah, I want him. Yeah, my face is going to get hot. Because <laughs> I want him so bad. And he followed me back on TikTok. And we've been talking. But he's so like, that's not girl on the FAQ page on, on his Reddit. On the FAQ page on his Reddit. He said, I am not interested in you. And I said, you know what? That's actually a healthy boundary. Because in my mind, I'm like, oh my God. That's my boyfriend. If you think about it, like, that's my boyfriend. It's not. Anyway, he followed me back and I almost pee pee blood fart in my pants. Okay? I blood farted. Why? What questions do you guys have for me about blood farting? Anything? No? Okay. He followed me back. We've been talking and he's, he's obviously so nice. Like, he's so nice. And it's so like, because it's kind of flirty. Anyway, I'm, I'm over the Call of Duty thing. I'm literally like, I join people's lives now and I'm like, this is not... I'm thinking about making a third account. I have made so many third accounts over the last three, four years. I had that one that was called Adele's Cousin. If any, that's a deep cut for any people to remember that. I had one, Brittany underscore Greta Van Fleet when I was really deep into my Greta Van Fleet era. And then I kind of like silenced that one. I'm thinking about making a third one again, just so I can be a menace. Just so I can comment the most abhorrent, rabid, asylum level shit and not be like, Ariana, what are you doing here? I want to be one of the, one of the anonymous masses. Okay. I want to be just a small rat in the sewer of TikTok. I am but a rat in the sewer of the universe. Okay. <laughs> When I, when I see a hot man, pick me, choose me. That's what I want to comment. Without the comments under that being, Brittany, what are you doing? Let me thirst. Let me do this. Look away. Look away. Stop. That's literally how it, like, let me do this uninterrupted and unabashed, okay? Because I need to do this to get it out of my system. I need to get this out of my system before Hosier and I move to Ireland together. Okay. I know he's got his house there, but like, we're going to have to upgrade when the Broski Report set is there. It's just a whole thing. I don't know. This episode of the Broski Report is brought to you by Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser Concealer. Do it all with the concealer that does it all. Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser Concealer is a do-it-all concealer that conceals, corrects, contours, and highlights in a click. I use it as an all-over base because I love the formula. And y'all have seen my makeup tutorials. I use this thing all the time. This concealer gives up to 12 hours of crease-resistant, moisturizing wear, which is important for me because I'm on camera most days. Sorry about that. Sorry you gotta look at me. There's a built-in sponge tip applicator also for on-the-go application, and the applicator is actually antimicrobial. So what's not to love? Visit Maybelline.com to buy yours today. 
This episode is sponsored by Tinder. Team, it is officially fall. And with cuffing season right around the corner, Tinder is the place to be this season. The chilly breeze and cozy nights are setting the stage for those fall flings that everybody wants. Whether you're looking for a serious partner to get matching Halloween outfits with, a friend to go drink pumpkin spice, whatever, or looking for a whirlwind fall fling, the power is all yours to decide. Tinder gives you so many opportunities to find whatever it is you're looking for. And for the students that are back on campus, if you wanna connect with other verified students easily, get on Tinder U. Enroll now to make new friends, create new experiences, and make the most out of your college experience. Who knows, guys? The new study buddy you meet from Tinder U can lead to becoming your permanent study buddy. Tinder's the dating app out there that is truly fun and easy to use. So download Tinder to open yourself up to a world of new possibilities and experiences this fall. Explore all the possibilities for yourself. So I'm over the Call of Duty thing. I'm making a third account and y'all will be, I don't know. Y'all will be uh, lucky if you find it, okay? Because I'm not gonna do it anything in, near, or around Britney. It's not gonna be in the Britney Broski cinematic universe. This is going to be, what's it called when it's not canon? What's it called when you hear voices? <laughs> the fuck auditory hallucinations sometimes i feel like i hear music when it's not playing we can talk about that at a later date though what's it called when you have multiple personalities so what is the suggested search bar here kind of <laughs> what's it called when you sweat a lot what's it called when you can't, when your hands shake when you can't smell when you can't feel pain when you can't sleep okay what was i even gonna google you guys see my post malone canes cup yeah, get into that. I waited in line for this bitch and I wanted the pink one with Posty on it. And I pulled up, I was in Houston, America with my mother on the way to the airport. And I said, you better stop at Cane's and we're gonna get a, a, a reusable, limited edition, one of a kind Cane's Post Malone collab cup. And guess what? I pulled up, I said, give me the pink one. They said, we're sold out. Let's move on. What's it called when, what's it called when it's not canon. Non-canon. Fuck you. Fuck you. Non-canon is something that isn't in the continuity of the movies. The old expanded universe, for example, in non-canon now, so it's known as Legends. Oh, in Star Wars. You want to know my Halloween costume, guys? And I'm going to regret this because it's not cold in LA right now. It's It was 84 degrees yesterday and it's like late October. Oh, I'm going as Kylo Ren. Now, Kylo Ren with a breastplate. <laughs> Kylo Ren with double D titties is my costume for this year. So we're doing that. We're doing plus size big tit Kylo Ren. <laughs> we're doing Sheehan, Cider, uh, Lane Bryant, Kylo Ren for Halloween. <laughs> we're doing 3XL Kylo Ren. Okay, so that's actually on the docket. If anyone wants to be plus size Ray or plus size Finn or plus size BB-8, you better let me know. We could go as a couple's costume. Okay, we're doing that. And I know I'm gonna regret it because I, I bought that Kylo Ren costume for a cosplay video when I dressed up as Kylo Ren at the end of my uh, TikTok cosplayer video on YouTube. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna use this because I bought the helmet. I bought the fucking belt, the, the cowl that he, the like scarf around his neck. It is about 15 pounds of fabric. I'm going to be a sweaty man. Also, Kylo Ren, his little black dress, his little dress. I'm literally going to have to pee because I'm going to be drunk on Halloween. I can tell you that right fucking now. I'm going to have to pee so bad. Guess what? Dress is going in the toilet. I can already tell you that right now. It's going to smell like piss and sweat and ball sweat. And I don't even have balls. Okay, we're doing plus size breastplate Kylo Ren ball sweat for Halloween. And I'm gonna go full glam, of course. Of course, because why not? I'm gonna do full glam. Glitter, glitter Kylo Ren. I'm gonna do full glam and I'm just gonna carry around the helmet all night, I think, because like I'll walk, because it's not one of those high quality helmets. It's literally, pla it's got Velcro on it, girl. Like it, they put Velcro on it. And it was like 40 bucks too. Ah! I'm just going to carry it around all night. And uh, hopefully I find my Star Wars cosplay boyfriend 
because hopefully we go to some straight bars. I am begging on my bended knee for my friends to want to go to straight bars. Do you know how hard it is being an ally? When all my gay friends, we go to the gay bars and they are sucking and fucking and licking in the bathroom and I am standing at the bar with a Diet Coke and vodka just dancing to rain on me? When is it my turn? When are you bitches gonna go to a straight bar with me? Answer me this, riddle me this. When is my allyship gonna be rewarded? Y'all need to get me penis. This is the cost of allyship. I'm on a dry spell and all of you are suffering because I'm on a dry spell. <laughs> oh my God. When is, I need some straight allies in the fucking chat. Give me your straight allyship. This has got to be a two way street. Oh my God. And let me tell you something else. I know I mentioned it, but if I see one, <laughs> my face is hot. If I see one masked man, please, for the love of Christ, hide your family, hide your children. Please run the other way because I'm coming. I am coming for you. If you dress up as a ghost from Call of Duty, it's over. <laughs> Oh my God, that edit someone made of, I took her to my penthouse and I freak it and they put my laugh as a transition into the, <laughs> I, took I took her to my penthouse and I freaked it. I had to make my mind up to like, keep it. So good. I also got a thirst edit of me on my own for you page the other day. Oh bitch. Oh bitch, we made it. Oh bitch, we're doing thirst edits of Brittany Broski. Yeah, it's about time. Where have you been just been? I saw that, I said, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 okay. I repost it, I repost it and I, I look at who's commenting on it. I'm like going through every single account, straight man, please be a straight man, please be a straight man. Hey, it's never a straight man. But honestly, let me tell you something. For it to be the girls, to comment on those videos. I'm like, that's more validating than any male validation ever could be. Like to have a woman look at you and be like, that is beauty. Oh, <gasps> do you mean it? Wow. And all the comments too were like, I don't know. I just love y'all. Y'all are so nice. Anyway, if you're a straight man wearing a mask this Halloween, just fucking run. Just run the other way because you're not gonna like what's gonna happen. You're not gonna like what I turn into, okay? The rats, we're the rats. I recently found out that that audio is a Germa audio. And what do you know? What do you guys know about Germa? What do you guys know about Germa? I would love to have Germa on Royal Court. <laughs> this is Germa. Love him. Germa, I love you. Please come on Royal Court. I tried to get Ludwig to come on Royal Court because we just had Hassan on. I'm trying to get into these Twitch streamers. If you are a Twitch streamer, and you want to come on Royal Court, you better shoot me a DM. Meow! No! 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 What the fuck else was I gonna talk about? I wanna rant really quick. Just, just really quick, okay? This is totally separate. The shop tab on TikTok. Let me ask you a question really quick. Who is asking for that? Who? Yeah. Who is asking for these features? No one. You know what else? Since the whole TikTok, like American owned, pre ban, post ban, whatever, TikTok is so different now. It sucks. Like every other video is an ad. I get videos that I've already liked that are coming back on my For You page. Babe, I've already seen it. I've already liked it. Like, get it out of here. I'm getting videos that have. And I don't know, you know, what part of the algorithm this is, but I'm getting videos that have no likes, like no, it's not any content that I would interact with ever. And I'm also getting videos from like huge creators that are not in my sphere. Like for lack of a better descriptor, old, like the straight, are you on straight or alt TikTok? Like that shit, the straight TikTok videos from 2020. Like that, I get that shit on my For You page. No matter how many times I hit not interested, it shows up. Uh, it's just like, I don't, the algorithm is so fucked now. I don't know what happened and it introducing features like the shop tab and this, uh, who wants that?
No one. And they, oh, don't even get me started on Instagram about changing the notifications tab to the shop tab. Dude, I can't wait for the next social media platform. Me and Stanley talk about this all the time. What is the next TikTok? What is the next short form or maybe text-based or music-based app that's going to come out that's going to like change the landscape again? I feel like we're due. We're due for a new app. TikTok has secured itself as a monolith in this space forever and ever. Amen. Until they decide to ban it. I don't fucking know. It's so much a part of the cycle of, you know, we, we do Instagram, we do TikTok, we do Snapchat, we do whatever. Like it's the cycle of apps that you open every morning and, and close every night. And, and, and I am excited to see what comes next and what creatives will come from that app. I feel like it's time. I've been waiting. So we'll see. This episode is sponsored by Dipsy. Picture this, you're hanging out in your favorite spot, headphones on, and the world around you fades away. When listening to Dipsy stories, you're immersed in a vivid world where every touch, every breath, every stolen glance is felt with breathtaking intensity. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. Discover stories about second chance romances, adventurous vacation flings, and hot and heavy hookups. Yeah! Radically inclusive, Dipsy has stories for straight and queer listeners, and 56% of stories are voice acted by people of color. You can now listen to spicy audios by your favorite TikTok creators. They're attentive to your every need, prioritize your pleasure, and have voices that will make you melt. New content is released every week, so in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. They also have soothing sleep stories, wellness sessions, and sexy written stories to read. So let Dipsy be your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, relax and unwind, or even heat things up with a partner. For listeners of my show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash broski. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash broski. Dipsystories.com slash broski. I do think my house is haunted, but I'm fine with it. I've made peace with it. This is like a 1920s house. And think about all the life that's been lived in this house. It kind of like comforts me a little bit of I'm a part of that story now. You know, this is over a hundred year old house. And it was built in the sort of, uh, during the pictures and, and the, the movies and the, the silver screen. Like that whole era of Tinseltown and Hollywood. And to see like I'm, I'm a part of that story now is really cute. I do think the house is haunted, but I'm, I love it. Because it's, it's not a negative energy. It's like a happy presence. And I had my mom come, my ghost hunting mother. And I was like, mom, I want you to walk around and just tell me, like, if you feel anything that I should be cautious of. And she was like, okay. And so she did. And she was like, there's, there's nothing. Um, it just feels very uh, warm and like loved. And I was like, okay, good. And she said, and this kind of freaked me out. I was like, don't tell me that, but it's kind of comforting, I guess. When Taylor was here, my bestie Taylor, she said she was working in my office and I was asleep, of course. She heard someone in the kitchen. It sounded like someone was moving coffee cups around. And she went and checked. She was like, Brittany, she went and checked. Hey, I was asleep. And my mom, when she was here, said that in my sitting room, I have a sitting room kind of in the front of the house. She felt this overwhelming, like maternal grandmother feeling like, like an older woman. Uh, her energy is kind of attached to that room. And I was like, wow. So... I don't know. I've made peace with it. I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm not going to prod around. You know, it's like I live here. This is my house. It's my belongings. It's whatever. But I, I don't own the building. I'm not going to mess with it sort of thing. Like be respectful. Uh, you can be a skeptic or you can be a believer or whatever. But I think the philosophy to subscribe to at the end of the day is just like, I'm not going to bother it. If sometimes I hear stuff in the house and I'm like, period, I'm just going to go to my room. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go to my room. It's weird living alone as as a woman uh, in your like 20s is like, you know, I have a security system and I have whatever, but like when it's those sort of things where the scariest thing of all is your imagination and the unknown, I don't know, no, nothing, no security system can protect you from that. If you're hearing cups and plates move around in your kitchen, it's just like, okay, I'm gonna go to my room. <laughs> okay, I don't really know what to do about that. <laughs> 
it's been my dream since like high school that I'm going to have a house one day that is just the crash spot. Like if any of my friends ever need a place to stay or they're in town for the weekend, like you don't even have to, we don't have to hang out all the time. Just like be in my house. Like I love that. I'm, I love living alone because I can walk around naked and I can sing at the top of my lungs and I can do this. I can, if I want to leave the dishes in the sink, bitch, I'm going to leave the dishes in the sink because the only person that has to deal with that is me. So I love that. I, I love living alone. But having someone else in the house, you know, for like two or three days at a time is really, it's just like a joy of mine. I love hosting. And my guest room is so cute. It's like Texas themed. I've got turquoise and Texas stars and rustic iron and suede. It's very Texan and I love it. And it's a joy of mine to have people come stay. And it also brings life into this house in a way that isn't having to fucking live with someone, you know, like ju they're just having a roommate, the older you get is like, I don't, I want to just be messy. And the weird hypocrisy of like, well, I can keep it messy because I know I'm going to clean it, but having to like communicate with a roommate and all that is just like, I don't, I'm too old. So I love living alone. And Ian came and stayed with me for a little bit recently, Ian Smith. And it was so fun. Like he did his own thing. I did my own thing, but we would like go to Olive Garden and uh, sit in the living room and just like talk. It was, it was fun. So what was I talking about? Oh, Haunted. Love it. Also for a little like, this isn't related to anything other than Austin. I was just in Austin for ACL. There is a hotel in Austin called the Driscoll. And I know a lot about the Driscoll because I've done uh, ghost tours of Austin. I've done a couple and the Driscoll is always a hot spot. And it's a very interesting history with the Driscoll because it's that old like cattle oil baron money that built it. And I think the history is like they built it and they kind of went in the red and then it was so expensive because they were trying to recoup their money that no one could stay there. And then it kind of shut down and someone else bought it and it was, you know, whatever. Um, and Driscoll, I believe was, he was a cattle baron. The Driscoll Hotel, one of the premier historic hotels in Texas was opened in 1886 by Colonel Driscoll, a wealthy cattle baron. I'm so smart. The hotel cost $400,000 to build, which is equivalent to 92 million today. It's a Romanesque style building with 60 rooms. Look at that. It's so cute. I love it. It's hosted many high society and political events. Okay, so this is, these are the ghost stories. Cause that's what, of course, that's where I was going with this. The Driscoll is always a hot spot on ghost tours because there's a very famous story, two very famous stories of a little girl who stayed there, I think named Samantha who was the daughter of, I, th I think, a politician or one of the wealthy guests who stayed there. And she was playing on the staircase while her father was, you know, at the top of the stairs, something like that. And she had this little wooden ball that she was playing with. And I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was a, a spirit that pushed her or something like that, or if it was just, you know, a child's sort of lack of coordination, but she sadly fell down the stairs and died. And the wooden ball rolled down the stairs. And that's how I think the father found her or something like that. They always tell that story because sometimes the hotel staff late at night have reported they hear a wooden ball like rolling down the stairs, you know, like plopping. Um, and then they look and nothing's there. It sounds like a wooden ball. And so that's one of the stories. Very sad. The second story is, it's right here. It's, it's, it has to do with room 525. It's the story of a dead bride who killed herself in room 525 after her fiance called off their wedding. And I don't know what the full story is. The gist of it is this. Exactly 20 years to the day, and in the same hotel room as the original suicide bride, a second young bride took her life in the bathroom while on her honeymoon. After this second rumored death gathered some attention, the hotel's room 525 has become notorious for its bad karma. It's like, they, this has been on ghost shows and stuff. Like, it's really something uh, sinister in that room. There's also a hotel in San Antonio, which I've always known it as the Yellow Rose Hotel, but it's actually called the Emily Morgan Hotel. And Emily Morgan, her nickname was the Yellow Rose, which is like the Yellow Rose of Texas. It's like a, it's like a thing. If you're from Texas, you know. 
So the Haunted Hotel San Antonio, named for the young woman they call the Yellow Rose of Texas, Emily Morgan, holds more than the spirit of its namesake, especially on the ninth floor. The Emily Morgan Hotel is opposite the Alamo, perhaps San Antonio's most famous historical destination. And the story is, so this building, this hotel used to be a hospital um, during the, the time of like Battle of the Alamo. And the top floor was like the very top floor was the surgery and like emergency, you know, surgery floor. There was what is now the service elevator used to be a body chute down to the crematorium on the very bottom floor. Now it is a fully operational, like it's like owned by Hilton or, or Hyatt or something like that. And I went on this ghost tour and they told us about it. And I literally got a chill down my spine because he was like, you can see for yourself, you go up to the top floor and it smells different than the lobby. You know, you go in the lobby, it's a normal, like it's a beautiful, you know, Texan themed touristy hotel. Go up to the top floor, permanently in the walls, it smells like formaldehyde. It smells like uh, antiseptic and it, it, like, like that sort of medicinal smell. And sure enough, we went up the elevator. And we went up to the top floor and it has that smell. It smells like a fucking hospital. And I was like, oh, guests have reported that they hear gurneys going down the hallways in the middle of the night. Dude, be serious. They have reported that they hear screaming, like people being operated on. Because back in those days, there was no anesthesia. Okay. Banging on walls. The squeaky wheels of a gurney or like, uh, you know, uh, hospital beds being wheeled down the hallways. And then, of course, the service elevator, which it's always a service elevator, bitch. Uh, the body chute. And so we went up there. Also, I need to confirm this. I need to Google it. But the swimming pool, which is on the roof, is particular because it's made out of metal. Like the bottom of it is made out of that silver metal that I think used to be the hospital bed, something like that. Let me look it up. Okay. Among the most famous is the apparition of a nurse from the 1920s or 1930s. Guests have claimed to see her in the hallways tending to her unseen duties. Yet when approached, she vanishes into thin air, leaving behind a palpable sense of the supernatural. Additionally, elevators within the hotel have exhibited peculiar, peculiar behavior. Guests have reported elevators inexplicably stopping on the seventh floor, a floor unoccupied and inaccessible to guests. A cold chill and a sense of unease often accompany these elevator anomalies, leaving guests with goosebumps and a sense that something otherworldly is afoot. <laughs> Room 810, where shadows watch and whispers haunt. If you dare to stay in room 810, prepare for an encounter with the unknown. Guests have described waking up in the middle of the night with an unsettling feeling of being watched. Ew, I just got a chill. Others have heard faint whispers in the room where they were alone, adding to the room's eerie reputation. The mysterious phenomena extend to unexplained noises, like footsteps echoing in the night. On the ninth floor, a guest reported hearing distinct footsteps in the hallway, prompting an eerie investigation that revealed no one in sight. A particularly chilling experience took place in the lobby, where a lone guest felt a sudden cold touch on their shoulder while seated in an armchair. The touch was undeniable, yet when he turned around, no one was around, leading the guest to question whether a spectral presence had made itself known. This, I think all this shit's real. Like, sorry. I do think that there are, my mom refers to it as residual hauntings, where those ghosts, ghosts, spirits, whatever, are stuck in a loop associated with this building and they're doomed to experience that same loop for whatever reason um forever and ever maybe there's something tethering them there maybe it's unfinished business maybe the tragedy of what happened to them is is just forever going to link them to that place i don't know the hotel's lobby has seen its share of otherworldly apparitions guests and staff have reported witnessing shadowy figures or misty forms late at night these apparitions often appear and disappear mysteriously for some, shadowy figures are a haunting reality. In one reported incident, a guest encountered a dark, indistinct silhouette in their guest room. As they watched, the figure slowly dissipated, leaving them shaken and bewildered. And it's always like, you know, when a, a ghost, quote unquote, is 
present, the temperature in the room drops. That's a thing that, that my mom has also kind of confirmed is that you can feel the room get colder. While the seventh floor, ninth floor, and room 810 may steal the spotlight, paranormal activity has been documented on various other floors. Guests have recounted hearing footsteps, voices, or whispers in hallways when no one else is around. Some have described an eerie and oppressive atmosphere that lingers in certain corridors as though the past refuses to rest. Electronic devices have been known to act on their own accord within the hotel. Guests have reported TVs and lights turning on or off by themselves in their rooms. Some guests have even experienced unexpected malfunctions of their electronic devices while staying at the hotel. Even the hotel's meeting and conference rooms have not been spared from paranormal reports. Attendees of events and meetings have shared stories of hearing strange noises, witnessing objects moving on their own, and encountering unexplained cold spots within these spaces. It seems that the supernatural doesn't discriminate when it comes to business or pleasure. Ew. And then a bunch of reports of, like, guests feeling like someone's watching them sleep. I mean, look at this hotel, dude. It's beautiful. It is so beautiful. But I, we went in there and knowing that the basement used to be the mortuary, the, the morgue, like literally it was refrigerated, like the morgue, the surgery on the top floor. And for any failed surgeries, they just throw them in the body chute directly down to the morgue, down to the crematorium. It's just like, who the fuck was like, you know what? Hotel. Okay. We got all these rooms. How about a hotel? I'm thinking Hyatt. I'm thinking Hilton. Crazy. How did I get started talking about ghost stories? Oh, the Driscoll. If you're ever in Austin, I would recommend staying at the Driscoll. It is beautiful. It's in the heart of downtown. Um, the bar. If you don't stay there, go to the bar. It is so Texan. It's exactly how I want my house to look. And uh, the cocktails are delicious. The staff is really, really uh, nice. And uh, they'll answer any questions. I love staying at haunted hotels because you can ask them and everyone always has a story. Like, it's crazy. Anyway, Emily Morgan is also kind of crazy. This is kind of like a human moment that I wanted to share. I was on the flight back from Austin to LA after ACL. And I got upgraded to first class. And so I'm sitting in first class and we're approaching the end of the flight and I'm sitting next to this old man. He's probably 70 years old and I had to get up to pee. And I was like, I'm so sorry to do this to you, but got to go for a piss. And so he gets up and, and he comes back and he sees my tattoo, my Rolling Stones tattoo. And he goes, you Stones fan? And I was like trying to give the cues like physically that like I'm putting in my headphones and I had to take my headphone out to be like, huh? <laughs> like polite, of course. I was like, sorry, say it again. And he was like, you Stones fan? I was like, yeah. And I go to put my headphone back in and he goes, I saw the Stones at the da, 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 1968. And I was like, <sighs> And I rolled my eyes and I was like, you know what? I turned to him and I was like, who else did you see? Because he was talking about the Forum, which is a famous venue here in Los Angeles. And uh, I started asking him other things because he was like, I grew up um, in Long, in Inglewood and I've moved all over. He said I was, uh, I started working in, like a blue collar job. And then I eventually became the owner of the company and then it became a fortune 500. And then I owned that. And then I, it took me all over the world. And I just, in that moment was like, this isn't every opportunity when you meet uh, someone new or someone who is not in your walk of life or who's not in your, you know, friend age range. It's an opportunity to listen and learn. And so I kind of, I was like, all right, Brittany, put your fucking headphones away and talk to this, this older gentleman. And for the next 45 minutes, we sit there and we talk about how he saw um, the Eagles and Fleetwood Mac and Aerosmith and Joni Mitchell and all of the uh, Simon and Garfunkel, all these crazy famous like rock and roll hall of fame legends at these small venues in the sixties in LA. And I was asking him all about it. I was like, 
has it been just surreal to see Los Angeles turn into what it is? You know, like that was the golden age for so many, in so many people's minds, you know, of Fleetwood Mac of it all and how Laurel Canyon and the Hills are so influential and how much life has changed, I guess, for him. I was just picking his brain about it. And it was such a, an eye-opening, cute conversation. And uh, how things have changed. You know, he was like, tickets. I asked him, what were tickets like back then? How did you get a ticket to go see Joni Mitchell? And he was like, they were about $3. And uh, you would save up a, a couple days worth of work. And you would go to a show Friday night at the Troubadour. That's just what you did. And shows at the Troubadour used to be free. And all shit. I was like, wow. Wow. Like, all of that history in this city is so, you forget about it sometimes. I love, I've learned to love living in Los Angeles because I'm such a music freak and there's so much living history here. You know, Capitol Records right in Hollywood and I'm like, like Universal Studios, Anaheim is right there. Like all of these, it's, it's so cool. So we sat there and talked and he was asking me about my music taste and, you know, we had a lot of overlap. And at the end, he was so nice. He was like, I can tell that you have a, a a wide range of appreciation for all different types of music. And he was like, that's good. You got a good head on your shoulders. I was like, thank you, old man. I think his name was um, Barney, I think was his name. And he was just as sweet as can be. And for him to be, you know, in his 70s and I'm 26 and we're bonding over a, a shared love of, he gave me some... Uh, music documentaries to watch and movies. I literally wrote them down. He said, Echo in the Canyon, he told me to, to watch. Hollywood Eden. And then he gave me some recommendations for some, I was like, what are the best mountain cities around here? He was like, you need to go to Mammoth. You need to go to Lake Arrowhead, Big Bear and Brightwood. I was like, okay. It was just so, it just made me like happy to be alive. And I'm so glad that I took my headphones out and I actually talked to him because Learned some stuff, got some cool, you know, deep dive into the past and just connected with someone who I, you know, will never see again and connected with it. And I think that's what it's all about. And so it just, I thought about him all night, all, all that night as I was like, got in the Uber and went home and whatever. I was like, I hope he has a, a wonderful life and, and he's lived a lot of life. And um, yeah, I love having non unconventional friends. There's so much to be learned and experienced that we just, you get so wrapped up in your own life. You know, the selfishness of my life and it's all about me and this and that and my friends. And it's easy to stay in that bubble of like me and the other 20 something year olds just t trying to make it through life. And, and it's hard to find people like that too that are not related to you. So the internet, it can be such a nasty, gross thing, but there's so much room for connection if we just utilize the internet in a, in a much more responsible and intentional way. There's so much connection to be made and so many things to be learned. So yeah, I, I talked to this old man on the plane and it was, it, it was, I'm so glad I did. So yeah, that's kind of my little human tidbit of the day. My tip is to try to establish a connection that seems unconventional. Okay, team, that'll do it for me today. Love Hosier. I will be moving to Ireland soon. You know, it'll be a whole thing. Like I'll, I'll kind of update you guys. It took me long enough to get Ireland up on this board. So whatever. I'm gonna go DoorDash Popeyes right now because I am craving spicy chicken. And I'm due for a good diarrhea. So I love you guys. And we'll see you next week. And be safe. And have a good one. Bye-bye. <gasps>